multi-level universe, multi-level cosmology, multi-level geometry. Before we can fully understand multi-level cosmology and multi-level universe, we have to understand space curvature and gravity. Don't feel ashamed if you don't understand them yet. Most astrophysicists don't understand them either. To measure space, time, and dimensions, there are three geometries. Number one, Euclidean geometry, number two, non-Euclidean geometry, number three, multi-level geometry. Euclidean geometry is the standard geometry we know from our daily lives. Geometry which makes no allowance for time nor gravity. In Euclidean geometry, one meter is always one meter. Number two, Non-Euclidean geometry takes into consideration not only space, but also time. In non-Euclidean geometry, one meter is not always one meter. Number three, multi-level geometry takes into consideration not only space and time, but also gravity or mass. In multi-level geometry, one meter could be sometimes zero, and at other times infinity, depending on your position. Multi-level geometry. Let us select a cubic light year of space in a distant sector of the cosmos. <clears throat> if the total mass of matter energy inside that one cubic light year is the same as in our sector, then if we measure its size from the inside, it will also measure one cubic light year. If the total mass of matter energy inside that one cubic light year is less than in our sector, then if we measure its size from the inside, it will measure less than one cubic light year. For example, 0 0.5 cubic light years. If the total mass of matter energy inside that one cubic light year is more than in our sector, for example, due to the presence of a massive star, then if you measure its size from the inside, it will measure more than one cubic light year. For example, 100 cubic light years. If that selected cubic light year contains a really massive star, then its total measurement from the inside could be much larger than the one cubic light year we have measured from our sector. For example, 100,000 cubic light years. If that star inside the sector gets more and more massive, when it reaches a certain critical mass, then it explodes. After the supernova explosion, where there used to be a critically massive star, there is now a black hole. If we measure that selected one cubic light year of space from the inside, after the supernova explosion, and after the creation of the black hole, we will find that it is much smaller now. Instead of the previous 100,000 cubic light years, it could have, let's say, only about 2 cubic light years now. Several questions arise. Number one, what happened to the star and its massive matter energy? Number two, where is gone the missing 98,000 cubic light years of space? 
Number three, what energy, what reaction powered that massive, unprecedented supernova explosion? Question number one, what happened to the star and its massive matter energy? A supernova explosion happens when a star reaches a critical mass which leads to the creation of an event horizon and of a black hole. Most of the mass of the star falls into the black hole, but since the creation of the event horizon is not perfect, some of the mass or matter energy near the event horizon escapes into the surrounding sectors. Question number two. Where is gone the missing 98,000 cubic light years of space? Most of the missing 98,000 cubic light years of space falls into the black hole because space and matter energy are inseparable. Small portion of the missing 98,000 cubic light years of space is ejected away from the black hole into the surrounding sectors together with the exploding matter which was ejected away from the event horizon of the newly born black hole. This appears as an explosion. Question number three. What energy, what reaction powered that massive unprecedented supernova explosion? After most of those missing 98,000 cubic light years of space fell into the black hole, that sector of space becomes suddenly crowded. The borderline matter energy which did not make it into the black hole, seeks out less crowded sectors. The force behind is nothing else than matter realignment into less crowded sectors powered by gravity. The view from inside the black hole. The 98,000 cubic light year of space, which had together with matter energy, fallen into the black hole, is now separate from the space on the other side of the event horizon. This matter energy space, which had fallen into the black hole, is in fact like a separate universe. This is a new, lower level of a multi-level universe. A new level of the universe is born. What was observed as a black hole creation from the outside is observed as a Big Bang explosion from the inside. The 98,000 cubic light years of space, which had fallen into this level from above, causes a space explosion, in other words, a Big Bang inside this level. It is the beginning of a new and expanding level of the universe. The more matter space energy falls into this level from above, the more this level expands and grows. The beginning of our universe. Our universe has begun in the same way as a black hole in the higher level of the universe. As long as our level of the universe keeps expanding, it means that more matter-space energy is falling into our level from the above level than is escaping from our level into black holes within, in other words, into lower level of the universe. The end of our universe. When our level of the universe starts shrinking, it means that more matter energy is escaping from our universe into black holes within than falling into our level from the high level. It is the beginning of the end. Please visit the website.